Look at all this that's going on here. Oh, my film is busy. And I'm really pleased about that because I am going to be doing my little curtain project today. And I've got lots of cakeys on the go. But what I wanted to show you was my late blooms of my film. But look, they've got roots on them. Look at that, flower spike and roots. Not one, but it's happened twice. Super interesting. I've never had this orchid do this for me before. How cool to see those so late in the season. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Instead of doing my table tour, it's extremely windy. I'm going to catch a break in the wind early morning and do a blooming alley tour so we can enjoy some blooms and then show you what has been going on and certain things that I have recognized, especially with regards to a dendrobium. This is the Saraula right here. She has beautiful, beautiful bloom clusters. I'm fighting hard to keep the roots going on my Brassavola flagellaris. The wind has been extremely strong and very dry and I'm fighting hard. At least this one is extending again. You can see how the root tips are struggling to continue. Just a little update on those. Whereas my perinii here, yeah, that, that's okay. I've still got roots going there. They're all right. And the ones up there are hydrating really well. The elephant in the room, <laughs> so to speak, maybe Blooming Alley. Thank you so much. If I wasn't clear and specific how much I appreciate having you here today, Thank you for being here. You can see my Stanhopias are hanging up. Um, yes, it's not exactly where I want them, but it'll do for now. And I'm going to show you why. Because look at this. Do you see that spike? Oh, it's going to be great if I can keep it safe. But there's another one in the other basket right there. Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> but check this out. Ta da! Spikes coming down under the basket as well and through the hob material. So there's a quick update regarding my Stanhopias in their funky setup with extractor fan, hob material, foam, filter, etc. Because ta da! There's another one. So we don't just have a one hit wonder. Unfortunately, when I recognized that spikes were forming, I had already bashed one. So this one, although it was firm a couple of days ago, it's gone all soft. We lost one spike. But if I hadn't bashed it and set it down before hanging it up, we would have had another one coming through. But isn't that amazing? I am super pleased as you can imagine because this has been a lot, a lot of trial and error, trying to set up a cute setup for Stanhopia, but not using organic media. And then cute, looked cute and grew well. But as you saw, the spikes were buried. And if you give them just one little bit of push of resistance, they'll be gone. So I lost two years of blooming on my Stanhopias. Not anymore. Now, <laughs> the trick for me is to remember to bend down far enough and go through. And the longer those spikes get, um, yeah. So we're not home and dry yet. <laughs> I'm working on it. And now we're looking at my Procatavola Golden Peacock. Look at this. She is back in bloom. Still one bud to go, but this is marvelous. And she is complementing the Myrmacatavola Francis Fox beautifully with her oranges. Look at this pairing. How about that? It's all a little bit crowded in here. I mean, if I thought it was crowded before the Stanhopias are hanging here, this is a little bit of a quetched space now. <laughs> but if we go up, this is where I go tippy toes to get a fragrance. Isn't she beautiful? Phalaenopsis Leodoro, sweet memory. 
beautiful. I've never had my summer fells up here on the top shelf of my blooming alley, but she is perfect because I just need to go tippy toes to get a sniff of that gorgeous fragrance. Meanwhile, I don't have to because she is very obvious in this space, even being outside. Beautiful fragrance. Walk into a candy shop and salivate that kind of fragrance. <laughs> and I have moved my Lelia Perparatas up here just to give them a little bit more of a respite. Let's see if the leaves darken up a little bit. Not that they have to, but you know, something is what the naked eye sees. And another thing is if the viewfinder sees something different, you might as well go with your gut and say, hmm, a little bit more protection can't hurt. But I want to show you also, look at that shadow in my Panorica Ionocentra. We're gonna have some blooms out of that one as well. Random up here is the Zygopetalum and the Zygonesia in the back there on the right, that one. This one is due for a repot. The roots are starting to grow. I would like to film it because if I make a mistake, Michael McCarthy will probably be able to help me out, point it out, and I can correct it very quickly. But the wind has been so strong, I would sound like a dragon breathing into the microphone, and that's why I haven't approached that project yet. Another elephant in the room, my Epidendrum Parkinsonianum. That one bud is coming along quite nicely. And let me show you what's going on underneath. Hey, <laughs> isn't this? Oh my goodness. You know, I always like getting new orchids in and getting them to bloom because oh, something shiny and new. But when these classic old timers of my collection come back into bloom, I love it. Repeat bloomings are so satisfying. I couldn't tire of them and the fragrance at night now I've got a battle of the fragrances going on here. This is a beautiful honeysuckle lemon at night. It's very, very obvious. This is a beautiful powdery floral sweet fragrance. Very elegant fragrance all day long. This is the Kaular from Bicronutum. And then we have the beautiful cream pie, lemon sherbet cream pie from Mylalia. And then we have one, of course, that is absolutely not fragrant. You know, never mind. But then we have Francis Fox. So this shelf, oh my goodness. Let me not forget the Prostechia back here. Now I'm going to put a pop up with regards to the name because I completely forget. I bought this one because I wanted the Lancifolium and it is not the Lancifolium. And Michael McCarthy identified it for me last year. And I forget because I never changed the tag. <laughs> Oops. But this, yeah, just in bloom. And this one is pungent as well. I mean, it's all kicking off once again in the blooming alley. And it has been for quite some time. Of course, we have some newcomers back in the boat here with their additional contributions to the fragrances. Oh. I am so spoiled and I'm so glad I can film this, at least without having the wind blowing against the microphone. And then we have the Citrina doing really well. I'm starting to lose some blooms. I would like to make a Monachica versus Citrina video, but I was waiting for my Renanthera Monachica down there to open more buds. But again, the wind has been so dry, it's been dropping blooms. So I might need to get onto that video pronto and not miss the mark because I've got both of them in bloom at the same time for the first time in my collection. Quick look-see at the Tolumnias. They are faring so much better this year. So much better. If I can get that to focus, I have a Lusneri basket holding me back here on the right. <laughs> but look, yes, I'm, I'm pleased. I'm pleased to see that they are looking a little bit more of substantial with their with regards to the foliage and the growths. I have still a few to deal with down here and I'm hoping that they'll recognize I 
understood my mistake and I'm in the process of correcting it, so please bounce back. But in general, I do really, really like what my columnus looked like this year as opposed to this time last year. I'm gonna scoot you up a little bit and see if I can show you the roots coming out on my portile. She is coming into root growth and new growth and it's all kicking off with her as well. Yay! My tetragonum here on the right, we're still waiting. Snooze fest going on here. Usually a busy orchid for a couple of months of the year with bloom flushes repeatedly, but no, not yet. We're still waiting for the new growth. But I have the Aranti Flammeum right here with its new growth extending. It's looking marvelous now. Yes, I know. We would like to see some blooms. Maybe that is a culture I need to get right after it's gotten itself established now. So next step is do you need more light? I'm afraid to give it more light because I see how quickly the leaves respond and get anthocyanin on them. I tried that for half a day and boom, she was getting red on the leaves and I was not happy about that. But here, Eonocentrum popcorn haruri. Sorry, Eonopsis popcorn haruri. Spike, spike number one. I'm hoping maybe for two more spikes, that would be nice. Hear ye, hear ye, listen to me. But we have one spike coming. And then this no ID dendrobium, supposedly my unicum replacement is taking its sweet time. If that is an unicum, then I have an elbow version. We shall see. Because I did not remove my unicum blooms when I said I would. I didn't see any more decline in the cane, so I just left them because you guys, the fragrance of that tangerine, oh, that sugary orange right there, together with sugary raspberry, and then what is going on behind me. I just couldn't. I couldn't take these blooms off, but they're fading now. So that's okay, they're fading. And we've got root growth coming. This growth never extended to something of substance. Never mind, I need those roots. And then Victoria Regina is slowly but surely starting to deplete in her blooms. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get another flush. There are some nubbins that are swelling, but who knows if that's a keiki or will it be a bloom? It has been beautiful to have the unicum and the dendrobium next to each other like that. And never mind, here we've got another one, the polyanthem, dendrobium polyanthem. Sugary licorice. I'm not a fan of licorice, but I do love the fragrance. And even though I don't eat licorice, if there is a bag of licorice open near me, I like that fragrance, the anise fragrance. We have a liqueur in Spain called Pacharan, which is anise. And if you get a very, very good quality one, it has that licorice texture to it. And I love it, but I wouldn't eat licorice. Aren't these beautiful? <laughs> yeah, moving on <laughs> to Dendrobium exile, which is really rocking it this year. You can see how the growths are extending from previous years, just goes on and on. And the next two growths are already coming out and roots. If I get a bloom this year, that'd be great but I'm spoiled for fragrances at the moment and <laughs> I'm not gonna be greedy. The fact that this orchid is starting to just, you know, grow and stay where it is and look happy, that's important to me because it was a spiddly little thing to begin with and then a weak little spiddly thing when I got it, which is kind of scary. And then I messed around because I wasn't sure, are you gonna grow upright or pendant or what's going on? But here she is. I would say happy as Larry, but I don't know who Larry was. She's happy, <laughs> let's keep it at that. Let me very carefully pan you down once again to my anosmum. Yum. <laughs> and then here are the uh, film keikis on a ninja mount. They're doing really well as well. They will all become part of the project. And Snow Dragonka San really had great eyes when I filmed the update of my inorganic mounts. She noticed this cakey coming. I didn't even see it, but here it is. All right, we have 
this one, which was the start of the entire thing of me losing a lot of roots because of my copper application. There's a sheath, but it is empty. My Schilleriana, even though it's very difficult to see, is growing two new growths, and I moved her back into this very shaded part of my blooming alley because she was getting a bit too much light, even for my liking. So two new growths coming though, after the repot, she is developing a new root system as well. Happy to see her bringing those to the forefront, and there you can sort of see a new growth. That's one of the two. And I wanted to also show you a very clean growth of my Nefetz Alex Poli. This is last year's growth with all the damage from a misdiagnosed pest, which I now understand is thrips, and I was treating for moth larvae. And all the leaves are affected, and some really badly, which makes them curl, because they never got the sustenance that they needed. So yeah, they curled like that. Garlic-infused alcohol. And if I saw some damage at the early stages, garlic-infused alcohol. Early stages, garlic-infused alcohol. Continuous upkeep. Look, no symptoms of thrips, nothing. Oh my goodness, I hope that didn't come across on the mic. I have been standing here for the past three minutes trying to hold my position so I don't jiggle around too much. We have fighter jets going over our area. I love fighter jets. I love the sound of fighter jets. And oh my goodness, but we have had fighter jets going over our area for the past three days quite regularly, which, hmm, I hope they're only practicing. Back to my Nefertalix poly leaf. Clean garlic infused alcohol. Yes, I'm happy result. Okay, we still have a few other things to look at here. I've got a Tabasco Texan Bloom. More fragrance to contend with. The confusion and the delights here are real. I still have another bud coming. Two buds, sorry. I just saw that there's one swelling, but here's another one tucked underneath. Quel surprise! Thank you very much. Isn't that amazing? I lost one of the blooms to Tiki here. Corno Servi, variety Chatela Day. And that is because the next one is pushing on, which is wonderful. We're gonna have another little trio pretty soon. And I am getting new growths on my Roy Tokonaga as well, which are tucked in the back because I'm trying to make sure that the light training keeps them upright in the pot. So there's one there, but there's another one elsewhere. And the same thing here garlic and alcohol, garlic and alcohol, and I am pushing hard to protect my growth. If the knife, it's Alex Poli can do it, this one, Roy Tokonaga can as well. So how much time have you got? All right, we'll keep going, because look, Ascacentrum Ampuyathea, back here in her summer spot by the wall. Aren't they wonderful, those straight upright new growing root tips? There's two more to contend with right here. And I have a beautiful root that's growing gorgeous and please keep your fingers crossed. I have very gently lowered it down and weighed it down with a stone because there is a root tip that could potentially grow into the leka, and that would give me two roots in the leka for this reluctant rooter who wants to be in the air. So keep your fingers crossed for me there, please. Thank you. <laughs> Moving on. Here's my Cattleya Leopoldii. I need this pot. So I'm looking on the daily for signs of roots. The new growth has matured beautifully. Love it. This is what I'm looking at right now. I want to pot it up because I need this little pot for the newcomers of my Rapiculus Lelias. So that's a daily, are you there yet? Are you there yet? <laughs> and down here are the ones that we repotted and I am still loving the look of my 
little Cernua here. Look at that. She is lush, she is green. Roots are growing into the pot. I don't know how she's gonna cope and where she's gonna put out her new growth. That is next step, but right now, look at those chubby, very happy pseudobulbs. That pleases me a lot. Quick update on the two that we actually repotted because they showed nubbins. You can see that the growth is extending even despite the kink in it, but both growths are doing well. They will be smaller, but that doesn't matter. They're producing roots. And here is the mantecheri. The growth is doing really, really well, but you can see why timing is important and making sure the orchid does not dehydrate through the leaves. Yeah. The roots were growing. It is important to get them in to start the orchid off, but this leaf has dehydrated since being in the pot because she's drawing energy from behind. And I get it, and that's the way it is. But the humidity around the orchid needs to somehow be maintained, and that's why I treat my bare root orchids the way I do prior to putting in them in the pot so that not all the leaves drop. I do anticipate collateral damage, but yeah, that, this happened very, very quickly after the repot. But I think she'll be okay. That growth doesn't look like it's having any difficulty at the moment. I'm not concerned about the pseudobulbs either. I'm not concerned one bit. So <laughs> if it's one leaf that I'm gonna lose, then that's fine. And up here, all these beautiful little cuties here. My Catlia tenuis is doing a great job with her new growth back there coming out really nicely, as are my Rex pieces. Here's one, that new growth is doing well. I have not seen any more signs of scale. Also had copper treatment early in the year because I was getting fed up with that scale. I know the copper has nothing to do with scale, but I was getting desperate. My alcohol pinpointing treatments were useless, but here we are, that growth is coming on really nicely, even though it's a bit slow. And the Velotina growth, also developing beautifully. My Humbertiana here, Sobenicofia Humbertiana. Chugging along, slowed down a little bit, maybe getting a bit too warm. And then of course, prior to that, we saw Mona Chica. I have not had any more signs of leaves looking weird and dropping off. So that to me is a good thing. We have the gorgeous seed pod of the Maxima developing beautifully. What a sight, love it. I've got to be careful not to get that to break off. And then here is the CG Roebling in full root action right now. I can't see a sheath in the back of that one growth. We will have to wait and see, but this one's also been through the ringer, so new roots are more important than me wanting blooms. And then of course the growth of the watermelensis here coming along nicely, being light trained. They're coming straight at us, but the light source is coming from that direction. So I'm trying to encourage them to grow upright. Otherwise she's gonna be even more unruly to take care of. And then down here, I think last but not least, where are you? I have a spike on my Neo Phoenicia falcata. A really nice one too. Beautiful, generous little spike there. Fantastic. I was hoping to see another one, maybe later. But for now, we have that to look forward to. And the epidendrum, the reed stem crosses here are all in active growth. New growths are coming. Oh yes, and I do have one more thing to show you. And then I will definitely appreciate your time for staying so long. Let's go very slowly. Oh, hey, <laughs> Hibiki, check this out. Is it visible? Starting to pop, not the blooms just yet, but all those clusters are coming. Very much more obvious right now. Okay, let's pan across this gorgeous display to get to where I want to get to and show you what I want to show you. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Ta-da! Look at that. Now I have one spike that you can see hanging that is pretty generous and the other one is a little bit on the mediocre side. And that is because I couldn't see the spikes were forming and they were bashing against the trellis with the wind. Yelf! And I couldn't see that that was happening. And I kept moving the orchid back and back and back. So now she is way away from the trellis. But yeah, we're going to get blooms on my multiforme crossed with Capricornu. Not as big a spectacle as last year. I learned another lesson this year. I want her to grow towards the light and stay contained in the pot because she is huge. I don't need these canes to go all over the place, but yeah, I didn't see the spikes forming. Oh well, there'll be some more pop of color from the Epidendrum Multiforme crossed with Capricornu. So, I'm just gonna wrap this up here. I think this is already once again pretty long. It's so difficult for me to do comprehensive, tight, short little updates of my blooming alley, especially with all this going on. From Epidendrum Parkinsonianum, I want to say thank you so very much for your time. Always appreciated. If you want to know anything more about any of the orchids that you've seen here, please let me know. And if you've recognized some that you have in your collection and you want to do a care collab together with me, also, please let me know. Have yourself a wonderful day and please stay safe. Take care. Bye.